You know that visual politic is one of the few political channels that pays a lot of attention to Latin America, one of the least covered regions in the world. Perhaps that is why many of you have often asked us to talk more about Latin America. Well, we've got a solution. We're proud to present Latin Politic, a newsletter that we have prepared together with geopolitical consulting firm Perch Perspectives. If you subscribe every month, you will receive 12 newsletters with the best information and analysis on Latin America to keep you up to date and better understand everything that is happening in this region. The cost? You can subscribe for less than 35 cents per newsletter, less than a small taco or a donut a week. In return, you'll be kept up to date on all major happenings in the region and better understand all the possible implications in addition, all of you who support us at Patreon level 4 and 5 will receive Latam Politic at zero cost. You can find all the info at latampolitic.com. From new iPhones with 5G capabilities to the latest warplanes such as the F-35, semiconductor chips have become the backbone of new technologies. These chips are at the core of new industrial trends such as, for example, robotics, nanotechnology, autonomous driving, 5G and digital ecosystems. Getting hold of faster, thinner and more powerful semiconductors will be the key to determining the outcome of many of the great economic, business and geopolitical clashes of our time. Controlling the manufacture of the most advanced chips may be the 21st century equivalent of controlling the oil supply in the 20th century. And no, I am not exaggerating. The country, the power that succeeds in becoming the technological leader in the semiconductor race will be in the best position to overtake the military and economic power of any other power. In the same way, companies that manage to get their hands on the latest chips will be in the best possible position to dominate their chosen markets. Semiconductors are no longer just components, but strategic resources that all major economies must secure. Arissa Liu, Analyst, Taiwan Economic Research Institute. As you can imagine, we are talking about an issue that is generating enormous geopolitical tension between the two great powers of our world, the United States and the People's Republic of China. Without digging too deep, a large part of the US government's sanctions against Huawei focused on preventing the company's access to the world's most modern chip manufacturing technology, that of Taiwan's TSMC. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. In order to understand this business, the first thing we need to know is that there are three major types of semiconductor companies. First of all, there are companies such as Intel, Samsung or Micron that design and manufacture semiconductors in their own factories. Then there are other companies such as Qualcomm, Nvidia or even recently Apple that designed their own processes and chips but in order to save costs, they outsource the manufacturing to other companies such as those that make up the third group, those specialized in semiconductor fabrication plants known as fabs or foundries. These are companies whose main business is manufacturing chips designed by others or in collaboration with others. This is the case for example of TSMC. The world's largest dedicated chip manufacturer, whose semiconductors are found in all types of equipment, smartphones, tablets, servers, consoles, wearable devices, automobiles, and almost all high-tech weapon systems developed in developed countries. And having clarified this point, the other aspect we also need to keep in mind is that right at this very moment, at the beginning of 2021, the world and the major companies are facing a demand for chips that is much greater than the supply. It has been a long time since we have witnessed such a large shortage of semiconductors and components. The lead time for some chips is up to 12 months. Andrew Chen, CEO of Kimpo Electronics. February 24th, 2021. Biden orders broad supply chain overhaul amid chip shortage. The president signed an executive order aimed at finally increasing domestic production of critical materials. Wall Street Journal. But perhaps the area where the impact of this growing chip shortage is being felt the strongest and where we can best see its consequences is precisely in one of the industries that has been hardest hit by the pandemic, the automotive giants. Listen up. On the waiting list. It's no joke. Global chip shortages are forcing major automakers to slow or even halt production of many models. Think of semiconductors as increasingly important components in modern cars. They are responsible for making electronic systems work, from the central computers that manage the power of electric or hybrid engines to driver assistance functions and navigation systems. Most modern cars are increasingly becoming computers on wheels. And in fact, it is estimated that electronics currently account for around 40% of a vehicle's value. And that is why the chip shortage is causing 
a lot of headaches in the industry. For example, companies such as Volkswagen, Ford, Honda, Nissan, and Daimler Mercedes, to name but a few, have had to reduce their car production. In the same fashion, the British financial information and analysis company IHS Market has estimated that during the first quarter of 2021 alone, the chip shortage will reduce production by approximately 700,000 vehicles worldwide. Other sources, such as Morgan Stanley, put this figure at 1.5 million for the whole of 2021. In total, according to Alex Partners, the chip shortage could cost the automotive industry as much as $61 billion in 2021. Now, the question that comes up is, what has happened? How did it get to this point? You see, when the SARS Coronavirus 2 pandemic forced the major automakers to halt production, causing the largest shutdown of car factories since World War II, their demand for chips plummeted. However, during the summer of 2020, as restrictions were eased, demand recovered faster than expected, largely due to low interest rates and stimulus plans put in place by governments around the world. So as production returned to its former levels, a problem arose. The gap left by the automotive companies in the chip factories had been filled by the giants of consumer electronics such as Apple, Samsung, Microsoft and all kinds of companies producing smartphones, game consoles, computers and a thousand and one different gadgets. Companies that were having a very good 2020, not least because of the social distancing measures that forced consumers to stay home. The problems were uncovered days before Christmas 2020, when companies such as Volkswagen, Nissan, Fiat Chrysler and Daimler began to report production problems. Many governments even decided to take matters into their own hands and put pressure on the world's leading manufacturers through diplomatic channels. All the chip makers' production lines are already running at full capacity, and some are even overloaded. But we have come to the agreement that our chip makers will do their best to support automakers in the US, Europe, and Japan, as there are many jobs involved and this industry is crucial to the world economy. Wang Mei Hua, Taiwan's Minister of Economic Affairs. And make no mistake, talking about semiconductors means talking about Taiwan, particularly TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the world's largest specialized manufacturer, a leader in manufacturing technology, and only one of three companies worldwide that can produce cutting edge semiconductors. Listen up. The most important fab in the world. DSMC is the world's largest third-party chip manufacturer. This company is, for example, the only manufacturer of processors for iPhone and the only company that also manufactures the new M1 processors for Mac computers, one of the Cupertino company's biggest bets. It's also a major supplier to companies such as Qualcomm, Nvidia, and virtually every other major chip developer. Do you want another example? Its plants manufacture chips designed by the American company Xilinx that pays a key role in the electronics of the F-35, the latest jewel in the crown of the US Air Force. The fact is that TSMC's factories are currently running at full capacity and the company is working flat out to increase its capacity. Cranes, trucks, excavators and all kinds of heavy vehicles are working around the clock day and night, weekdays and holidays in order to expand the Taiwanese giant's production facilities. During 2021, the company has set itself the goal of opening new research centers, increasing by 70% its manufacturing capacity for 5 nanometer chips, currently the most advanced in the world, and completing its new 3 nanometer chip production plant which is due to start operations in 2020 in the city of Tainan, in southern Taiwan. To give you an idea, its capex budget in investments for 2021 amounts to about $28 billion. That's almost three times more than its investment in 2018 and 60% more than in 2020. As we have already told you, the chip sector is in full swing, and that obviously has a direct impact on the bottom line. To top it off, the company has just announced that during the period 2020 to 2025, it expects its revenues to grow at an annual rate of between 10 and 15% per year. This is almost double its previous forecast, a record that could be substantially higher if some cutting edge projects it is working on go ahead. For example, it is working hand in hand with Apple to develop a new type of micro OLED display built directly on chip wafers for use in upcoming augmented reality devices. <laughs> And all this explains why, in the last five years alone, its share price has multiplied by more than five. Just in the last year, the Fab's shares have appreciated by 140%. 
This translates into a market value of nearly $600 billion. TSMC has become one of the 10 largest companies by market cap in the world. We are talking about a situation that is fully impacting Taiwan's entire economy. An island in full bloom. This small island of just 24 million inhabitants has placed itself at the epicenter of the new global technology race. During 2020, Taiwanese semiconductor production grew by more than 20% to more than $107.5 billion. To put this in perspective, almost 25% of the entire global semiconductor business is located on this island thanks to TSMC and many other companies that make up a very advanced ecosystem that accounts for approximately 15% of Taiwan's GDP. But Taiwan has not only become a crucial link in the global supply chain, it's also taken the lead in making the thinnest, fastest and most powerful chips. give you an idea, despite the pandemic, which incidentally caused only nine deaths thanks to the quick reaction of the government as soon as the crisis was detected in Wuhan, Taiwan's GDP expanded by nearly 3% in 2020, while wages and exports broke all-time records. Real estate transactions grew at a rate of more than 30%, and according to the real estate research agency Cushman & Wakefield, no less than 50% of transactions involved the acquisition of land, plants, and buildings by high-tech manufacturers. And it is precisely the boom in semiconductors that has led to even better forecasts for 2021. Take a look. Taiwan raises GDP growth forecast for 2021 to 4.64%. Nikkei Asia. So there you have it. This is one of the hottest markets in the world. But take note, because at the same time that Taiwan and its companies have managed to position themselves as world leaders, the large economies such as the United States and China are now fighting hand in hand in what has already been described as the chip war. For example, US Congress is considering fronting at least $25 billion to support local production, not least because it is estimated that a problem with Taiwan's fabrication plants could cause serious problems in the defense and consumer electronics industries, two of the pillars of the US economy. In the same vein, the federal government has agreed to TSMC investing $12 billion in a new plant in Arizona that will manufacture chips for the US military. China, the world's largest chip buyer, is involved in a $100 billion plan that Beijing has put on the table in a bid to win this kind of technological war. A plan that has allowed it to increase its presence in chip manufacturing, but with a quality level that is still far from that of Taiwanese or South Korean companies. Anyway, I hope this video has allowed you to get a closer look at the new global competition for semiconductor dominance and to better understand what is going on in the semiconductor industry. In upcoming videos here on the Visual Politics channel and together with Value School, we will talk about the great US chip manufacturer Intel and many other interesting topics. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. All the best. We'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about politics and world affairs and hear some more of my lovely voice, come check out the Reconsider podcast where we don't do the thinking for you. You. Find Reconsider at www.reconsidermedia.com or on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcatcher.